My name's Jack Swift. Uh, I'm currently involved in Paralympic triathlon. There's the three disciplines. I always like to say there's a fourth discipline and that's the tri transitions. So the swimming, you know, the biking and the running. The, uh, the, the sport is, uh, look, it's a great sport. We have, the culture is amazing. We race what's called sprint distance. So it's half what the Olympic athletes do. So we have a 750 metre swim into a 20 K bike ride and then a 5 K run. And in the class I'm involved in, that's a PT4 class, which is a combination of below knee amputees and arm amputees, as well as leg impairments. Jack's a, a great athlete. He's obviously very experienced and been to the Paralympics before in 400 meter running. And so he's been there, but he now has obviously got a new passion of triathlon and um, currently ranked top five in the world. So I had a workplace accident in 2006, December 2006, where a 14 ton excavator crushed my leg in a trenching accident. Uh, and as you can imagine, once 14 ton worth of machinery hits your leg, it's gonna be pretty unforgiving. So from there, I was rushed to the Royal Melbourne Hospital where I was heavily sedated and I woke up the next morning with about five doctors and my immediate family standing around my bedside and the doctors explained to me there was about a 5% chance I was going to be able to save my leg. But in doing so, my leg was never going to be fully functional. At the start, Jack didn't really want anyone coming to the hospital to see him, including myself. So that was really hard because when you love someone, you want to be there for them. And then I just, you know, told him I was going to be there regardless if he wanted me there or not and that was that and um, he could get rid of me so it was just important to know that you know things were going to be a little bit different for a while but it would all work out okay. I think he said one day that he was at rehab and he realised that there was a lot more people worse off than him out there he'd only sort of lost the bottom of his leg and yeah so he, um, he sort of kicked himself up the ass a bit and thought you know lost a little bit of a leg, you know, these people going through that can't move their arms and legs. So. I was visited by an ex-Paralympian, his name's Don Elgin, and Don spoke to me not about Paralympic sport at that stage, he spoke to me about what my life was now going to be like using a prosthetic leg, and he organised to go up to Sydney and get a prosthetic made up, not to compete, but just to stay fit, stay active. Always like a little bit confronting at the start, but then you see Jack now, he just walks He'll walk into the pub with his leg on and a Haviana thong on there. I went over <clears throat> to watch him race in New Zealand at his first international event and I was just so proud. I think I was just sitting in the, the crowd just crying because I just couldn't believe like how far he'd come. And then to go and watch him in London with our families and, and a group of friends was just amazing and it's probably going to be a memory that we'll cherish forever. Paratriathlon was... Uh you know, post London Paralympic Games was a sport that was developing and growing. You know, there was para triathletes racing around, but there was just no series or no, you know, specific para triathlon uh, events on. And then it started to grow, there was there's more movement in the para movement for triathlon, and you know, they ended up putting it into Rio for the first time. It's definitely suited to him triathlon and I just think the lifestyle as well, you know, getting to train down the beach and then when he goes on his rides. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I was only kind of just getting my head around athletics and all the classes before he swapped over, so. <laughs> Today was the first race of the Gatorade series and uh, it was just a good hit out, I suppose, to get uh, some race fitness under my belt leading into the qualification period for Rio. My son Daniel and uh, Jack went to primary school together and got into a bit of trouble together. Sort of best mates ever since. Macca is one of my mates, just helps me out and makes sure my prosthetic's waiting there at the water's edge so I can come out of the swim and run straight to the bike. Jack will, will perform and race as good as most able-bodied able athletes. We'll go to a race and he'll be up to the top five outright, you know, and people will go, wow, you know, this guy's got one leg, he just smashed me. It can be dictated by the actual course. If it's more technical on the ride, that can give leg amputees an advantage over the arm amputees who aren't as good technically. So we'll see how it pans out. At, for the next year, Obviously my goal is to qualify for the Rio team, then to be the best leg amputee in the world and if that results in a medal then so be it. Pretty good effort for, you know, it's only 10 years ago that, you know, he was walking around with two legs and now he's 
is killing them with one. I guess when I see how much effort Jack puts in and his dedication and all the sacrifices that he makes, um, and just to see how it all comes together on race day, it's really nice. I think if you could pick one venue to compete in triathlon, Rio and Coco Cabana Beach would probably be the one venue, I think. <laughs> It'll be amazing. <laughs> be a bit better than London, anyway.